Hello everyone and welcome back to another Versatuner video. So in this video I will talk about ignition timing and how it affects your Renesis engine. So why do I make this video? So basically what I read all over the internet are different opinions on what is good for the engine and what is bad and I read somewhere that you can get away with less ignition timing and you won't lose noticeably any power at all and then I read like you can increase the ignition timing up to like 35 in the leading and 25 in the trailing and you will gain massive power with the right fuel and with the right porting and of course my engine is not ported so I didn't try that at all but what I did is I made four different nets as you can see up in the log names I did one leading 20 and trailing 9 map I did one leading 24 and trailing 13 map I did a stock map which is leading 30 and trailing 15 and I did the leading 32 and trailing 21 map that I currently use on my car. So how I calculated which map is the fastest is basically I took a specific RPM value and calculated how long it took to reach another RPM value. So in my case, the starting point is 4000 RPM and the end point is 9000 RPM, or basically the ref limiter for the stock car. Of course, I have another ref limiter set and I over refed it quite a bit, but um, yeah, that doesn't matter. So what I will do now is I will show you how long the ignition timing window in, in uh, RPM is and then I will tell you what my calculations said about each table. So yeah, let's go ahead and just do that for the leading 20 and trailing 9. So if we start at 4000 RPM We have 12.4 1 to 1 FU ratio and a leading timing of 14.5 and training timing of minus 0 0.2. So we have around 750 RPM. Then the ignition map is already at its max peak ignition timing for the rest of the RPM band. So I will go through the whole band. There are some little peaks, but those are just like correcting timing and random uh, events for the engine, like air valve openings. And well, if certain load points are not met, it of course tries to raise the timing. So just ignore them. They don't last long at all and they do not add any power in this case. So we go to 9000 RPM. So there you go. What I calculated is from 4000 to 9000 RPM with this ignition map on the same stretch of road with the same air fuel ratio.
as always. It took the engine 6.021 seconds. All right, so let's compare that to the leading 24 and trailing 13 map. All right, this is, as you can see up here, this is the leading 24 trailing 13 map. I will show you what the ignition map looks like right now. There you go. And now we start at 4000 RPM. We have an air fuel ratio already way richer than before. It's now 11.75 to one. The ignition leading timing is 15 degrees and the ignition trailing timing is now two degrees. So let's go through the RPM band and you can see for yourself what the air fuel ratio looks like, what the leading and trailing timing does. This time there were no corrections needed for the ECU since the load points were all within spec. And now we approach slowly 9000 RPM. And there you go. So with this map, with the leading timing at 24 and trailing timing at 13, it now took the engine from 4000 to 9000 RPM 5.909 seconds. So it was over 0 0.1 seconds faster with this ignition map. So let's compare that to the stock Mazda factory map. So this is the Mazda factory map. It has a leading timing of 30 degrees and a trailing timing of 15 degrees. So let's compare that from 4000 RPM. As you can see already, we also have 11.74 to one air fuel ratio. We have an ignition timing advance of 13 degrees and an ignition timing advance of minus 1.9 degrees for the leading and trailing spark plugs. So let's go through the RPMs and see how it affects the air fuel ratio and how it affects the ignition timing. So from 4000 RPM to 9000 RPM with this map it took the engine 5.859 seconds. So it was only 0 0.05 seconds faster than the map before. So now let's compare it to the final map with a leading timing of 32 and a trailing timing of 21. So this is the leading 32 and trailing 21 map. I will show you what the map looks like again. And now Let's see, the start point is 12.07 to 1 for the air fuel ratio. 
the ignition timing advance for the leading plug is 14.5 degrees and the ignition timing advance for the trailing is 0 0.5 degrees. So let's go through the RPMs and see how it changes. All right, so yeah, that is that. And with this map, with a leading timing of 32 and 21, like I showed you in the small video before, it took the engine from 4,000 to 9,000 RPM, 5.887 seconds. So it was actually 0 0.03 seconds slower than the stock factory map. And what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the engine doesn't need much more timing. So you will not gain more performance with more ignition timing. That is pretty sad since if compared to how fast is it reaching a certain speed in my first comparison where I showed you what you can alter for the ignition timing I said you can go up to three degrees in advance in advance for the leading and you can add a split of 11 for the trailing and you will be fine and you will get more performance since i since i first measured with the speed of the car and not with the engine rpm which makes a um, lot more sense since that is way more accurate i now get the real picture of adding ignition timing so what I will do now is I make a new map with the leading timing at 30 and the trailing timing at 20. I will try to mess around with the split once more and I will give you an update of what the ignition split does for your performance. And if it really helps or if you can just leave it stock and don't need to mess with the ignition table at all. So yeah, that is the honest picture, how things look currently and I hope you enjoyed this little comparison between those four maps and, and maybe you learned some new things like that you don't need a lot of ignition timing in the first place to gain real world performance and yeah. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.